Welcome back to another edition of Eat My Shorts right here at Grant Chair, smoking an imitation Lucky Strike, the rolled up floor sweepings, and a bugler paper. Gambler paper. Fuck, I don't know. We shall do more research to get back to you. Well, after uh, a daily shit show named Wednesday, uh, I was sitting at the computer and kind of doing my nothing and screwing around with Cat on the internet and others. And uh, the good idea fairy struck, or the bad idea fairy. We all know that. And it's not to be confused with bad decision time after vodka number 10. And still nowhere near where we need to go. Uh, that was the great malt liquor massacre of Thursday, and we're just not going to talk about that. But contrary to popular opinion, I'm not actually into black boobies all that much. That's just Drunk Joe's problem. Uh, for the most part, I'm into white ones. And it kind of leads me into my little point here. Uh, I get clickbaited every once in a while. And uh, Lord knows there's only two ways to do it. Either give me an inflammatory title where I'm going to argue with you in the comments section. Or you put a nice pair of tatas in a cooking show. Because who doesn't like boobies and food, right? That's how men are wired. Get the fuck over it. Mm, fucking cigarette went out. Stand by. It's a cinder rant without a cigarette, folks. Much like having sex while being sober, it's just not a thing we know how to do. So anyway, getting to the point here. Uh, Luber from Ukraine. Now, I don't generally watch this kind of crap. Because, you know, they're pushing this UN, one world government, Zionist, new world order bullshit. And it gets on my nerves. But they kind of, to the meat and taters of my argument here, why is there a war on meat and taters? Hmm. Well, I think I can elaborate. See, during World War II, uh, there was this big food crisis in Britain. Um, my ancestors in the wolf pack uh, really just harangued merchant shipping. U-boat captains really were the last pirates, folks. And because of that, they almost starved Great Britain out. And because our allies were in trouble, and Uncle Sam saw a few bucks to be made, why the American people were put on rationing. You got one egg a week, almost no meat, you had to save your bacon fat under penalty of law if you didn't turn it in to be made into the glycerin into nitrides, right? Which turns into nitroglycerin, right? A lot of your base components come from nitrates and from glycerin, right? That's how you make munitions. True story. So there was a war on meat in World War II where they said, oh, well, you don't really need to eat meat. You can eat plants instead, and you can have peanuts and, and all this other shit. And if you have to eat meat, well, there's this thing called spam that we're making a killing on right now that's basically trimmings that we were going to throw away anyway, which I'm not knocking spam. I'll eat it if I'm hungry. It's not something I sure as hell go out and ask for, but... The long story short, Great Britain was on the rationing system from, like, early 1940 until, like, 1962, 1963, maybe 1964. That was a long time, and arguably the British health improved overall because they were eating healthy foods, like vegetables and stuff. And then as soon as the war was over and stuff got unrationed, would you believe they went right back to eating bacon and things like that? Hmm. Now, if vegetables are so good for you and so tasty, why are they pushing them? Because they sure as hell don't care if you're healthy or not. Right. Now, there's been this war on Crisco and uh, lard for a long time where they said, No, no, this stuff's bad for you. It causes cholesterol. It makes you fat. Well, yeah, if you eat a bunch of it and you sit on your fucking ass growing hooks into your chair, yeah, of course, a lot of that shit's bad for you. You know, there's a lot of salty old dudes that lived on bacon sandwiches, Lucky Strikes, and liquor drinks until their 90s, right? Burgess Meredith was one of them. He was a salty old man. <sighs> but right now, there there's this big push, and, and I've noticed in my lifetime it started with Michelle Obama and her war against school lunch that tasted like something other than cardboard. And then predominantly McDonald's with their Happy Meals, right? You couldn't just get the regular fry anymore. You had to get sliced apples with it that were highly processed and covered in fucking sugar. They're, they're going after the kids' diet. 
and and they're taking away the meat and they're putting in your soy pro processed counterparts or your your plant based counterparts to this and I think the war on meat is a counterculture right now. Traditional American values, right? You know, you had bacon, egg, sausage, Lincoln patty, or link or patty, whatever you chose, pancakes, eggs, hash browns, fucking coffee, right? Black coffee, because, you know, anything else is a waste. And a lucky strike for dessert. That was the American breakfast, man, until probably the 80s. That's how rural America ran. Why? Because you needed the fuel in your body to get the job done that you had to do every day to be an adult. That way you could come home in the evening time after dinner, get shit housed, fuck your wife real good, and then black out drunk. And then wake up and get up and go about being an adult again. Well, it started with the war on smoking, then the mighty Smith & Wesson. Then they said the meat was bad for you, and then they would push the recycling and everything else. And, and I'm not knocking recycling, man. I'm just saying the way it's being pushed nowadays with climate change, it's a gateway drug to homosexuality. And they got to think, well, if meat's so bad for us, then why have people eaten it for tens of thousands of years and survived? And I'll admit I'm a carnivore. I don't like raw vegetables. I fucking hate them. That's why I either make soup with it, or I cook them in something, or do whatever, or I just don't eat them. I'm not a big fan of a whole lot of fruit either. Like, I like tropical fruits, but that's about it. You know? The thing is, is that anymore, the government has no business in our kitchen. They have no business in our bedroom. They have no business in the sock drawer where we keep the mighty Smith & Wesson. They have no business in our car telling us to wear a fucking seatbelt. Or to have insurance, for that matter. Right? They've taken it upon themselves to make themselves the, the Zionist nanny state that the world came to fear in George Orwell's book. In reality, it's much worse now. And they want to take bacon away from a generation of kids by pricing us out of the meat market, right? They, they want to take beef off the menu and try their value, protein, bioengineered crap. And a lot of the soybean stuff makes men grow tits. And it's no wonder why that we have problems with soft men that don't know how to swing King Dick around or, or wield the mighty Smith & Wesson. There's no wonder why you see a lot of Boys like little Billy and Timmy out there hitting each other with their purse on the playground over whose shoes look gayer. And uh, not in the negative context when I was a young man, when you called your friend a fag. You know, it's entirely different now. And I think that the war on the dinner table and the breakfast table has a lot to do with the way we are now. If, if kids ate bacon sandwiches in school and had lucky strikes and black coffee, they would not grow up to be soft little boys and girls. They, they would grow up to be men's men and strong, independent women. And that's my argument. Now, I respect you if you're a vegan, but the thing is, just because I'm a carnivore and you're a vegan doesn't mean I get to tell you you have to eat bacon and you don't get to tell me why I'm doing what I'm doing is wrong. You know, Freedom of choice, yo. Make yours... I'm team carnivore. In fact, the last vegan meal I ever ate was my hippie girlfriend when she sat on my face, and that was uh, when I was a young man. And to be honest with you, I was drunk enough, I probably uh, should have probably washed my mouth out when I was done. But, you know, you got to find the little man in the canoe and make your woman happy. And as always, if you love my foul language and my smoking during my rants, then kudos to you. You are a fellow brother and sister in arms. And if not, that's cool too, man. Maybe I made you think about something you didn't think about. And until then, you know, people can eat my cage-free, cruelty-free, vegan-based, soy-based life form hating motherfucking shorts. And uh, until we meet again, have a wonderful Wednesday.